morning and welcome. Happy Friday, Patriot Radio News Hour. And I know boy, Friday couldn't get here soon enough. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous day here in the Valley of the Sun. I hope this day finds you well. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group. For we're, this is working on decade number three. We've been doing this 23 years. Uh, we've been on the air in the mothership up in Johnstown at KHNC, and of course we've been on KXXT here in Phoenix for boy, I don't even know. I think maybe 12 years, maybe a little longer. Uh, 800-951-0592, that is our toll-free number. Of course, the website at allamericangold.com, and and as I said, it's Friday. My younger son, their, their last regular season game is tonight. Uh, they're undefeated. Uh, they're on their way to the playoffs, but it's their, their last regular season game. And then tomorrow... My older son is, they're playing, the, it's the big game this week. They play the winner of them and Monmouth. They play each other. They're going to win the their, their side of the conference and get to go on to the conference championship game, assuming they've got a few other games after that they, they should win. But, uh, yeah, so it's a big weekend for us. I, I hope you guys are, are all ready to put this week behind us. It has been a terrible week for the paper markets, uh, the the Dow. Uh, I know it was up 400 points yesterday. Of course, it was down 600 points the day before. It's currently down 300 more points this morning. Uh, the, the, the big drag, Amazon, Google, right? The, the quote, the fang stock not working. Both Amazon and Google had earnings yesterday, uh, and they both missed. And, and they didn't. They missed on revenue. Revenue is sales, right? That's the most important thing. When you think about what it is that stocks are supposed to do, they're supposed to be growth. They're supposed to grow. And when you miss on revenues, that means you're not growing. And this has been the problem all earnings season long. This was supposed to be the week that really set the table for what we can expect for the rest of the year. And unfortunately, it's been just like I said, I told you, we're slowing. It just is. Uh, we had fourth quarter GDP results out uh, at the low end of my expectation. It, did, it came in at 3.5%. That was the GDP number for the third quarter. So remember, we got 4.2. Now it's 3.5. Fourth quarter is going to be, I'm hoping, 2 point something. But we we'll all have to wait and see. And now I think uh, the paper markets are dealing with that reality today. We'll break all of those things down for you. Of course, it's Friday, so we've got our fake news Friday segment. And, and we're going to see about that. We had soft data out today that wasn't good. Now, now the soft data started to turn. Consumer sentiment was turning. We had another auction. You know, we have them every day. And I keep trying to tell you, you know what? And I know you're focused, and we got elections coming up, and everyone's focused in on the Dow. Get over it. It's time to get the big boy pants on and get over it. You have to deal with what is really in front of us. This is what we have to deal with. And you got two choices, right? You can pretend it's not happening and do nothing or do what, what the idiot they've been telling you to do your whole life, which is not working. Nobody's walking around with a million, two million, three million dollar IRA and 401k. Those don't exist. I mean, maybe if you're Jamie Dimon. The average guy on the street doesn't have anything. That wasn't the deal. But this is the reality. The reality is the dollar as the dominant player in the world. We're still the dominant player. You don't know. But you have to deal and understand. Look at it this way. 
And, and I'll use a, a basketball reference, if that's okay. The United States is LeBron James, right? He's the best player in the world. The problem is, right, is we're getting older now, right? And, and, and pretty soon, what, the skill sets start to fall off, right? You're still good. But you're not as dominant as you used to be. That's where we're at today. Right? Today, we're still good. But we're not as dominant as we used to be. And every one of these auctions, every time we go out to these debt markets, it's the same thing. Hey, you're good. You're not great anymore. So we're, we're, we're going to take a little less of you. And we got a younger guy over here that, that uh, we're going we're gonna to invest a little more time into that guy. Make sure you're protected for when the retirement party comes. 800-951-0592. Take the radio news hour. You wake up in the morning, sir, I put on my big boy pants. One of these things is not like the others. One of these things doesn't belong. Can you tell which thing is not like the others? Before I finish my song. From News Headquarters, this is Fake News. Friday. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. What is real? How do you define real? Fake news Friday. Fake, 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 fake. Welcome to another edition of Fake News Friday. Of course, this is where we we take stories out of the headlines. And we take one of them and, and... and we change it just a little bit, just a little bit to to throw you off. And, and of course, you know, obviously this is something where every day you hear it. Right? Every, every, the left side is fake, the right side is fake, everything's fake. I'm going to tell you what isn't fake. The need to protect yourself, the need to protect yourself and have that wealth insurance. Nothing fake about it. Uh, Ramon, are we ready? We are indeed, sir. I believe Jason is there. Jason, are you there? Yeah, I'm. I, I'm on, and I'm ready to go. He is prepared to win. He says. <laughs> When's the last time that happened? Uh, I think I won a couple weeks ago. When, no, uh, the other guy I don't was on. think you did. Wasn't that a technicality? <laughs> was that the day you were off? I don't remember, but it's been a while. Let's just say this: uh, I am the dominant player in this game. Well, let, let us get this game started, shall we? Let's go. Let's go. Story number one, right. CNN White House correspondent Jim Acosta, who works, um, whose network is a frequent target for Donald Trump's fake news barbs, called him on Monday to stop attacking the media because he's afraid someone will get hurt. The past week may have signaled a turning point in journalists fighting back against Trump's attacks with the White House Correspondents Association issuing a statement condemning him for praising Montana congressman who uh, body slammed a reporter last year. White House Correspondent Associate President, Association President Oliver Knox talked about the personal toll the words have taken during a panel on Monday CNN Citizen Conference. Knox said the day after Trump referred to some news organizations uh, as enemies of the people, his child came to him in tears and asked if he was going to prison. That's story number one. Uh, Story number two, Americans are paying more to cover the cost of illegal immigrants having children in the U.S. than Congress plans to give President Trump in a border wall. Uh, This year, according to an analyst of the Census Bureau uh, Bureau data, the report reveals that uh, women in the U.S. illegally had almost 
300,000 children in 2014 at a cost of $2.4 billion. That's uh, $800 million more than the Senate has approved for Trump's border wall this year and enough to pay for the wall over 10 years. That's story number two. Story number three, elections on November 6th are the most important elections of my lifetime. So much depends on what happens. Actress Jane Fonda told a film festival crowd in France. It's hard for me not to breathe right now, Fonda also said. The actress said she no longer speaks to some of her friends over her political differences. The actress also said that she spent more time in Vietnam than Trump or G.W. Bush did with their rich kid deferments and safe National Guard service. So that is story number three. All right, Joe, what say you, my good man? Wow. Um, hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a great question. Uh, I'm going to believe Jane Fonda that she stopped talking to her friends because I don't think she has any. Ooh. Uh, so I'm going to say that one's probably true. Uh, then the 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 story with the reporter. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, I believe that that is also true. But I'm going to say the fake part was his son crying to him about him going to jail. So oh. I'm going to say that's the fake news. So you're going with number one, okay? Now, Jason. Well, that's exactly what I was going to choose if I went first. I there's, there was too many. Uh, Things that could have been just altered on that first one. Uh, it, it sounds like it's a real story, but yeah, I, I think someone altered that. I, I agree with Joe. The Jane Fonda thing sounds completely real, and the, the second one also sounded real. So I'm going to I'm going to agree with Joe and uh, pick the first one. All right, you both are going with story number one, and that makes both of you losers. <laughs> actually, the st- and you're not losers. You're you're winners in my eyes. But actually, story number three contains the last line where the actress said uh, she spent more time in Vietnam than Trump or Bush. That is the fake story. But actually, uh, according to uh, the uh, reporter, he said yes. His child came to him in tears, asking if he was going to go to prison. Uh, whatever happened to sticks and stones? Will break my may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Whatever happened to that? That is now a microaggression. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. I, on our show in the afternoon, I've brought that up several times. People just need to get over it. <laughs> it is really. It, we are in the the wussification of America right now. That we are. Start, you know what? I'm telling you right now. You know what? It started with everybody gets a trophy. This is what we get now. <laughs> Neither of you getting a trophy you. after this if you don't get the next one right. <laughs> this was all part of my plan to <laughs> throw Jason off. <laughs> well, let's let's go round two here really quick and see if we can find a winner this time around. Story number one, the Morning Joe uh, show host opened Tuesday's show by bantering about Monday night's um, Red Sox playoff win for over four minutes before turning to the news. After Joe and his guests finished talking baseball, Brzezinski proceeded to accuse supporters of President Trump of being quizlings, a term defined as traitor who serves as the puppet of the enemy occupying his or her country. Scarborough said, uh, some grim news continues out of the Middle East and just as grim America's response to it. A secretary of state that seemed to bow and scrape to the Saudis yesterday humiliating the uh, America on the world stage, much like Donald Trump did in Helsinki. Then he said about Trump, it seems that you are for sale. That's story number one. Number two, San Francisco will soon become the largest city in the country to give non-citizens the right to vote in local and national elections, setting the stage for a potential legal showdown with Trump, the Trump administration. Undocumented residents will soon be permitted to vote in city school board races and U.S. House and Senate races in order to have a better say in their children's education and the citizenship process brought uh, process throughout the Bay Area. To date, only 35 non-citizens have registered to vote in San Francisco. One activist added there's legitimate concern that their information may be turned into the uh, federal government and they may end up being detained or deported. That's story number two. 
Uh, story number three. Two Honduran protesters painted a swastika on the U.S. flag and then torched it in support of the illegal immigrant caravans marching to the U.S. border. The protest was at the U.S. Embassy in Honduras. The Honduran government has made little or no effort to stop the caravans of people moving north to the U.S. border through Mexico. That's story number three. So let's go with Jason first. So let's see if uh, Joe will copy your answer. <laughs> well, I, you know, those stories all sound like they could be true. I think the first one, uh, I, I'm not a big complete uh, supporter of Trump and uh, any kind of criticism his way. I, I understand that stuff. Mm-hmm. The second story also sounds true to me. Um, I, I listen to that third story. I, I think there's something, I mean, that, that sounds sounds like something was manufactured in that one. I'm going to go with the third one in, in Honduras there. Okay. Now, Joe, your chance to win here. I'm not going with that one. Okay. So what was what was the second one again? It is about San Francisco giving, uh, quote, non-citizens, unquote, the right to vote in local and national elections. Okay, I'm going to say that that is the fake story, mm-hmm. because, and only because I don't know that they'll let them do it in the national, but I think they're going to do it in the local. I think that's the rub there, so I'm going to go with story number two. Man, you, Joe, Joe, your detector is fantastic. Story number two is the fake story because of the national portion of that story. See, not only do mm. I tell you what the what story is wrong, I actually tell you, you the part that's fake. You dialed it in exactly. <laughs> that, that should be like worth double points. It should. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's funny because um, I talked to Jason uh, earlier before we came on the air. And I asked him about, you know, his record of losing it, and I actually recorded it, so I want to play that for you. I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore! So he was, uh, <laughs> he was a little upset. But, He's going to uh, have to take it for a little while. So, uh, to be clear, let's just let everybody know, remind mm-hmm. them again, who, who was the winner. That would be you. That would be you. Joe. Now, I have an extra story here. Well, let's just see if we can, uh, maybe Jason can redeem himself on this one. Oh, we're going to go right. for an extra yeah. this- just for I extra still win. For funsies, yes, you've okay, won. You've won. Yeah. For funsies. All right. Here we go. It's a fake news story, believe it or not. The UK government bans the phrase fake news. The government has banned the term fake news after urging ministers to use misinformation or disinformation instead. The phrase, a favorite of, of course, Donald Trump, will no longer appear in policy documents or official papers because it's a poorly defined and misleading term that conflates a variety of false information from genuine error in the democratic process. UK government, they're saying uh, you can't say fake news. Is that fake news? Jason? Uh, I think that's true. Mm, Interesting. The fake news story being true. What about you, Joe? I agree. I think that is true. That is absolutely true. So you can no longer say fake news. <laughs> if we were on in the UK, we would no longer be on. That's correct. We would be thrown off immediately. By the way, Jason, <laughs> people here, the, 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 I just wanted you to know that the people of Phoenix, mm-hmm. they, they sympathize and feel your pain for all the beatings that I've given you. Uh, one of our great customers, Ed, uh, brought in, and, and bless his heart, because, you know, back when Eric and I used to do the show, we had a thing called Jack Daniels Friday, and and Ed brought in, not not a big bottle, just, you know, a little, just a little, uh, just a little uh, bottle uh, of Jack Daniels and asked if I would drink this and hoping that it would allow Jason to win. Oh. Uh, I will let everybody know <laughs> it is unopened. <laughs> oh man! Arlene's ready for a drink, though. So, oh, go ahead. just to let the people in Arizona know that they could go to shoutcast dot com. We don't have uh, uh, podcasting yet, but they can go to shoutcast dot com and go to American Freedom Network uh, as the search. They can they can uh, stream our show, uh, our, our three o'clock, which is two o'clock show there in Arizona I'm, I'm live. I'm going to let people in on a little secret. So I'm glad you brought that up. By the way, we're working on that. We we. We will, before the end of the year, you'll have the ability to go out to, to our site, allamericangold.com, and be able to, to listen to both shows. Cause, so Jason and Brian, they do a show in the afternoon up in Colorado 
but just as a little teaser for those of you that didn't know, they run specials up there as well. And I would say, what would you say, Jay? About eighty percent of the time, they're not what we run in Phoenix, uh, on this show. Yeah, I, I would say they're either. I would say they're either an alteration of what you did or a completely uh, different special. Yes, so a lot of times they are totally different. Then the show's totally different as well. You're not going to get, you know, uh, they they may mention the GDP number. They won't give you any details. It's not. Uh, I wouldn't say that it's all about uh, current, you know, stock market and economic news, right, Jason? Yeah, I, I kind of uh, lead up to the fact that you do the numbers and the reasons why things are going wrong, and we kind of report what happens when things have gone wrong and, and the social aspect of it. And Jason never loses on that show either. <laughs> I have full control of that show. The Picture Radio News Hour. Everybody celebrate. I'm a winner again. We'll be back right after the break. Get back to the economic data of the day. This is the Phyllis Schlafly Report, presenting a daily conservative pro-family perspective since 1983 and continuing the legacy of Phyllis Schlafly. Now, from the Phyllis Schlafly Center Studios, Ed Martin. While California is known as the Golden State, their housing situation is shaping up to be anything but golden. With skyrocketing housing costs, Californians are finding it harder and harder to make ends meet, and low-income earners are struggling to afford their homes. The cause may originate at the construction site, where the price tag to build an affordable unit averages at about $350,000. To build homes on California land, developers are subject to a rainstorm of regulations, including one ordering a percentage of all homes sold at a discount to go to indigent home buyers. The weight of this deduction must then be recouped in the prices of the other homes by increasing their asking price, which also adds to the risk of a development flop. In studies conducted by both the Cato Institute and the Brookings Institution, researchers found that the less land use restrictions in place, the more affordable real estate is. However, developers in the Golden State must yield to an astronomical amount of zoning laws regulating density, parking spaces, square footage, and landscaping. Although many Californians support a solution to the housing crisis, the majority of communities refuse to allow higher-density housing within their own area, a phenomenon called not-in-my-backyard. Californian Thomas Mann stands as a great example to the resistant will of these regions. Since 1999, he has been trying to obtain building permits to build two homes on his property, but his neighbors vetoed the proposal, claiming that man's house plans were oversized and even unesthetic. According to estimates, California needs 180,000 new homes a year to meet demand, but builders have only been constructing around 100,000 per year. So-called Berniecrats aspire to fight this problem through price controls and propose a repeal of the Costa-Hawkins Act, which limits how far the state government can extend rent controls. Through reckless solutions like this, California would slaughter its already troubled construction market. If this comes to pass, the always affordable state of Texas would witness many more California immigrants in the coming years. Thanks for listening to the Phyllis Schlafly Report. You'll be glad to know the legacy of Phyllis Schlafly continues. Upheld by Ed Martin, president of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, Chairman Helen Marie Taylor, Treasurer John Schlafly, a full staff in St. Louis in our nation's capital, and thousands of citizen volunteers, her eagles, across the country. You can be part of that legacy at phyllisschlafly.com. That's phyllisschlafly.com. 800-951-0592. So, uh, obviously, the, the earnings season has not lived up to what they were hoping for, uh, which has led to a lot of pressure on Wall Street. And, and, and it's actually fairly simple. Uh, the, the realization that companies, outside of reaping a benefit of tax on a tax cut, and buying back of their own stock, business isn't, you know, that great. It's okay. Uh, GDP came in at 3.5. Uh, they're, they're, according to the article I read, they're saying that the estimate was 3.4. I don't know who had that one, but they 3.5 was the number. Obviously, 
Uh, it was 4.2 before, and again, remember the promise. And, and when are, when's enough enough? Right? And we get it every single presidency. They make a promise. They promise us it's going to do this, and it ends up being the exact opposite. And where you know, and I think about it, we, we, this company started with NAFTA and GAF. And Eric told all of you, I mean, this was way before me, what was going to happen. Right, Every, all the jobs were going to leave, and all these things, and of course, that's exactly what happened, right? And you think about now the the tax cuts, which hey, I'm all for it, right? Let's shrink the size of government so everybody can keep more of the money. I'm good with that, but again, they sold this as, and, and really, here's what it was: it was a giveaway to business. Right? That's what it was. Yeah, they threw a little bone out there. Not that big. Most of us are learning that. Right? The two big promises. Everybody was going to earn an extra 4000 That never happened. <laughs> Not even close. But they talked about, remember, Larry, 4 5 6%. They got one quarter of four. One. And bragged about it. Of course. When that was happening, what did I tell you? We're, that's that's going to be it. Now it's three five, and and next quarter is probably going to be two something. Debts are exploded. Remember how I started the show. Remember what I told you, right? We were the dominant player. We were the MVP of the world, the superstar. Now we're getting old. It doesn't take fiat money very long. You know, we've only been full fiat since 1971. It doesn't take very long. And now what? Is, what everyone's turning to the younger guy, right? Turning towards China. Of course, let's face it. You know, China's got four times the amount of people we do. They're going to be the big star. And they're not coming to the dead auctions. Yesterday's auction, the seven-year auction, the worst in recent memory as far as foreign participation. It's drying up. I mean, gold's up eight, nine, ten bucks today. That's why. Don't kid yourself. You know, it, 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 it's not a quote-unquote flight to safety or, or or anything like that. It is simply, you know, the dollar's above ninety-six right now. So that ought to, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with country after country after country. Right? Remember yesterday I told you, throw Poland now. Right? Poland's a gold buyer now. <laughs> right? right? And they're just lining themselves up. They're either buying it or they're bringing it back home. What are they not buying? Because they used to, it, when they're buying gold, okay, before they started buying gold, they were buying something else. Again, remember, big, big countries and little countries and big businesses, they don't keep cash in the bank. You know, and it's so funny, because they tell you to put it there. Where they put they they leave enough in there right to cover payroll and buy products, but all those those huge right even take Amazon. Amazon made an incredible amount of money. They did. So did Google, right? It was the revenues that were bad. But what did they do with all that money? They put it in the bank. You buy bonds with it. That's what they do. And these countries have decided I'm going to start buying gold instead of buying treasuries. And this is what they're doing. They're diversifying. And you know what? And I know this is another thing they tell you. You need to be diversified. Right? Your portfolio has to be diversified. Right? You can't, you can't just buy Amazon stock. 
right? You got to have a tech company. You got to have an industrial company. You you you, you got to have a growth company. You got to have an oil company, right? You know that's what they tell you. Got to be diversified. You have to own physical gold and silver because truly to be diversified that's what you need why because all those other assets are priced in dollars and what are they saying about the dollar right now first of all everybody's freaking out about the federal reserve all of a sudden jay powell was a great friend president up until like six weeks ago Now they're like, what is he doing? He's an idiot. They're worried about the dollar. All of these companies, what do they say? Oh, the dollar is not too strong, too strong. Stop raising rates. This is what they're doing. These other central banks, these other countries, they're looking at these debt auctions, and they're like, man, that's a lot of dollars. You know what? I better diversify. Better get some actual physical metal. Because that's the only way in. Paper metal. Oh, buy a mining stock. Now you're diversified. You have, you know, your heads with gold. No, you're not. (laughs) They're not even close to the same. A mining company, we have no idea. There's a big hole in the ground. There's some guy standing over it that said, oh, I think there's a million ounces down there. We don't know how hard it is to get it out, what it's going to cost, right, this, that, the other. All of these other variables. Of course, most of these mines, they're loaded up with debt just like everybody else. They're not the same. There's a lot of wisdom and having something outside the system, especially when everybody is talking about a problem with that system. Hey, the Radio News Hour. We'll be back right after the break. 800-951-0592. You can keep waiting. It's okay. How's it working out so far? When you start really understanding all of the moving parts and they want to distract us and look over here and pay attention to this and pay attention to that so you don't focus on what is really happening. And if you're waiting for the idiots on TV to tell you about it, by the time they get around to tell you about it, it's already happened. You knew this crash was coming. I told you. A month ago, classic bubble top, and I listed all of it, the low unemployment, the super high consumer confidence and all that. I gave it to you. Textbook. What, do you think I'm a genius? I may be the dumbest guy in America. Seriously. You know what is so funny is how brainwashed all of you really are. You have no idea what's really coming. None. Even though I sit here day after day after day, and I tell you, you don't understand it. I know it. Why? Because you still don't want to believe it. We're aging. We're the aging superstar. Right? We're getting ready to get put out to retirement. These idiots on the TV are going to... Why do you think the Chinese are still saying, we're not doing anything? Go ahead. Put the tariffs on. Go ahead. Let's see. Let's see who's really going to be winning. What did I tell you? All of these Dow companies, they count on China for their business. It's the big story is the pulling away from the dollar and I keep telling you that and you don't want to get it listen we're adding forget about a trillion because that's a lie we 
we are going to add two trillion dollars to the twenty two trillion we already have this year. This year. By the time twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two get here, it's gonna be three every year. And it doesn't stop. And every every month, every week, every day, we go to sell these 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 dollars. It, it's incredible to think about. In single days, we need to sell as much debt as we used to have, like in an entire year when I first started. In a day. And now the rest of the world is working together, right? Swift, I keep talking about that. You don't get it. Think about the countries. It's Germany, France, Italy, China, Russia, right? It doesn't matter. Friend, foe, it doesn't matter. We want something else. SWIFT is controlled by the dollar, and it's controlled by the United States, and we want something else. And you got to live in fantasy land for about 10 years. For 10 years, they made money. They took your dollar. You know what they did? They took our dollar and said, this is worth crap. Brought interest rates to zero. Your bank won't pay you anything for keeping your money there. Yet the Fed's raised rates how many times? They still won't pay. Why? Because they don't have money. Everybody on a fixed income, really, 2%. Come on. And we let them get away with this. How about today's GDP number? 3.5. I'm going to tell you, that's... There are some good pieces in there. You guys did your part. Spending on personal consumption remained strong. 4%. You did your part. Here's the bad part. Inventory was huge. In other words, and this was my big worry... Everybody built all this stuff because they wanted to believe the hype, and they didn't sell it. Without, if, if inventory would have been flat from second quarter to third quarter, GDP would have only been 3.1%. That's not a good number. That actually is bad for the next quarter. But here's the part that we want the real kick in the, in, in, in the you know, and the private parts, business spending was negative. Right? We gave them all these tax cuts, and they were supposed to reward us, supposed to take care of us. They are supposed to be building, building factories, building the products, and doing all this stuff, paying us all more money. They didn't do it. Flat out negative. That was your 3.5%. Fixed income investment, down. Export, down. Import, down. Business spending, down. Guess where that means Wall Street's going? You guessed it, down. Pizza Radio News Hour, final segment coming up. I waited to the end because I don't... I, This is a small special, so you're going to have to go quick. I've got 20 $10 Indians. And you know, Indians are unobtainable. I've got 20 of them. Right now, they're normally uh, $725. Today, $710. I've got 20 $10 Indian gold pieces. Uh, And, of course, they're the best ones. I love them. This is the female Lady Liberty, the half ounce. This is the uh, coin that replaced the $10 Liberty. They're $710 at 800 
951-0592. And again, this is just what's happening. Everybody, uh, you know, we've been talking about this now for the last probably three months now. Supply has gotten tight. Premiums are on the rise. And and despite their best efforts, right, cause, you know, paper shorts, gold, ever, everyone shorting gold and, and gold, you know, not, not done great this year and this and that, but yet everybody's buying it. Right? Think about what the Italians are doing right now, right? And think about what all of Europe's doing right now, all of them buying gold. Think about all these countries just – just this week, two more nations coming out. We're buying gold. Think about them going after SWIFT and coming in for an alternative. Think about the fact that they don't show up to the debt auction. And especially this week, the, the paper stocks have gotten hammered. Usually they fly to it because it's supposed to be the ultimate safe haven. What it really is, it's the washed-up superstar. Sorry, I want it to be different, right? First thing we got to do is cut down government, right? Nobody, what? I haven't heard anybody even talk about that. We've got to shrink government. We got to get this debt under curve. Nobody wants to talk pension, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, you name it. They're all blowing up at the same time. And you know what we did? We took a shot. We launched this tax cut in hopes that we could grow. We went from 4.2 to 3.5. My guess is, that I'm hopeful, to maybe, you know, 2.6, maybe, 2.7, maybe. That's it. That was all we got. We didn't even get, we didn't even get six months of 4%. 800 951 Take this, I know, I get it. It's hard. You don't want, right? We don't want to have to do this. But when you look at it, and just from a logical standpoint, they were wrong. When they talk, oh, this is just a correction. That's a, fun, that's a nice way of saying, hey, we were wrong. We missed. We thought growth was going to be better. It's not. Here's the reality. Not only is growth not better, right? The, the revenue from all of these coming in, it doesn't matter. All of, Even if you were diversified, you didn't get to miss it. It didn't matter if you had the tech companies. It didn't matter if you had the oil companies. It didn't matter if you had the consumer products companies, right? They're all taking the beat down. 800-951-0592. Patriot Radio News Hour. Everybody have a great, great rest of your weekend. We'll be back on Monday.